Hey everybody, my name is Paul John and this is John Maybe. Hi there. And we are here to answer some of your questions from the Hippo Mailbag. Today we actually have a question from Hippo EM Board Review, so let's get to it. All right, so this is a question from Daniel. If a patient is critically ill due to severe polycythemia and requires immediate life-saving interventions, what would those be? That's a great question. So we should take a step back and take a look at the uh, picture of polycythemia. So it sure. comes in different flavors. There's primary polycythemia, which is uh, what I'm assuming is, um, in this case, is what you're asking, Daniel. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, that's polycythemia vera. That's a bone marrow neoplasm mild myeloproliferative neoplasm where you just generate too many RBCs in right, the bone marrow. Right. There's also secondary polycythemia where it is uh, high altitudes uh -huh. uh, or you have inappropriate levels of EPO or erythropoietin levels uh -huh. being secreted by like a renal carcinoma or if you have COPD. Sure. So let's take a step back and say, well, polycythemia vera, if that's what we're assuming, there's a couple of things to know about it. And that's again, when the bone marrow generates too many RBCs, the diagnostic criteria really for the test purposes, you uh -huh. just need to be remembering it when you see a hemoglobin level greater than 18 and a half in men, okay. uh, hemoglobin level greater than 16 and a half in women. Uh, in r truth, though, there's a lot of other things you have to do, genetic markers, serum EPO levels, all right, that stuff. Right. But classically, in the question context, you'll also see presentations of constitutional symptoms. Fatigue is a very classic finding, as okay. well as uh, pruritus in more than half patients. Right, right. Um, and there's this really interesting finding called aquagenic pruritus. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> where where you go, your your pruritus is triggered by like let's say you go take a warm bath. Right. Really, right. really strange, uh -huh. but that's uh, quite unique to polycythemia vera. Mm -hmm. So um, that uh, unfortunately there's no cure, but if you do diagnose it and monitor it, the mean survival is almost uh, no different than wow, other people. Wow. But classically, it's in the older people who gets diagnosed, 60s, right, 70s. Right. So, in that process, then you're thinking about like this hematocrit and this hemoglobin level yeah, yeah. at these, you know, just like outstanding amounts, yeah, right? Yeah. So, what, I mean, what, what do you do with that kind of like viscosity of the blood? What, how do you address that? Yeah, so uh, th th just like you were talking about, there's sludging. It's almost like honey running through your veins uh, and yeah. arteries. Mm -hmm. um, and so, it can lead to a lot of thrombotic complications. It okay. can be on minor levels, like microvascular thrombosis, where mm -hmm. you have this other unique finding in polycythemia vera called uh, erythromyalgia. Did you just make that up? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, it's a word that I made up. Uh, no, it's really uh, microvascular thrombotic complications in your extremities. And so you just have swelling and plethora, really redness, um, and it's very, very painful. Uh -huh. um, there's a specific treatment for that involving aspirin and hydroxyurea and, and um, other things. But on the bigger level, mm. uh, more life-threatening are the major vascular thrombotic complications. Okay. You're talking like stroke, PE, MI. Right, right. And those are the ones that you really have to be concerned about. Okay. So what's, what do you do? What's the evidence to direct you towards treatment? Great question. And so uh, it's good old flash and bloodletting. Uh, phlebotomy, really. <laughs> so if you have severe polycythemia vera with a major vascular thrombotic complications like uh, MI, stroke, PE, mm -hmm. that's when you actually uh, just do some phlebotomy. Just wow. good old phlebotomy. Believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a medieval torture technique anymore where you release the other humors. This is actually what the you do. Deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, there's no good evidence. There's no consensus guideline kind of thing that's published. Okay. Really, it's from expert opinion from various sources where some people suggest you just empirically remove 500 cc's of whole blood, you just let it drain out, wow. half a liter. Wow. Um, they will recommend replacing that volume if you can with okay. uh, isotonic fluids just to prevent postural hypotension. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But otherwise, some other sources will say try to phlebotomize till you reach a target of a hematocrit less than 55%. Wow. Again, a little arbitrary still, but there's no good evidence that's what the targets are. Right, right. So after you suck out all this blood, how about like the thrombotic complications? Oh, right, right. So, well, while you took care of the polycythemia part and the sludging, the actual uh, sequelae of the actual major thrombotic complications uh -huh. like the stroke, MI, PEs, right. they're unchanged. The treatment's unchanged. It's per the current guidelines for those individual okay. things. Right. So that's pretty much it. Um, Good to know. Uh, thanks for the question, Daniel. And until next time, uh, check in uh, for more questions that we'll answer through the Hippo Mailbag. Thanks. All right.